a lot. Good morning, fellas. How are you feeling? JP, good to see you again. As Alan said, my name is Tony Williams. I spent 10 years in England before I came to the United States working with players at your age, trying to get them to their dream of becoming professional players. Many of them are now in the Premier League, whether it's David Vaughan playing for Sunderland and Wales, whether it's Matthew Ethington playing for Stoke City and England, whether it is Brendan Rodgers, who is the, the, the new coach at Liverpool, whether it's Danny Ashworth, who's the chief executive officer of West Bromwich Albion. A lot of the, those players didn't make it, have gone on and stayed in the game. One of them, Simon Wilson, works for Manchester City on the statistics, on the match analysis. So you know going in, as a player and as a coach, the majority of your players are not going to make it as professional players. But it doesn't mean what they learn through soccer can keep them in the game or can create a great life for them through the values that they lead through soccer. So today what we're going to talk about is how you can develop your attitude, character and leadership through soccer that's not only going to reach your potential as a player but also as a person. Over those 25 years of coaching, I've coached some tremendous players at your age who are incredible with their feet, but the desire wasn't deep enough, their attitude wasn't positive enough, their character wasn't strong enough, so therefore they didn't reach the potential. Some of them are still in the Premier League, but whether they reach the potential, in my opinion and experience, depends on what they do off the field. The decisions that you make on the field will change the game. The decisions you make off the field will change your life, but not only change your life, it will determine how high the soccer ladder you climb. So today, it's not going to be a lecture, it's going to be an interactive workshop. I want to learn from you what you understand about what it takes to be a great player. So we're going to open up the workshop with one simple question and the question is why do winners win? So team one, team two, team three, team four, team five. So I want you to think about a team. When you think about a winning team, team one, who do you think about? When you think about a winning team in football or soccer, who do you think about? Barcelona? Team two, Madrid, three, Man U, Man City, as we go through the workshop, they're the teams, they're the names of your teams now that you're going to compete in and work together in, all right? doesn't matter how good you are as an individual, unless you can work together as a team, you're never going to win. Same with Chelsea, same with Man City, same with any of those teams that you worked with. The next level of the game is mental. Your feet will only do what your mind tells them to do. And if, your mind, if the message from your brain goes to your feet via satellite against good players, what's going to happen in games? You're going to get knocked off it. You're going to get knocked off it. If you keep your focus, you keep the ball. So let's make sure we're here, we're keeping focused, we're taking pride, and we're also working on our speed of play. So you've got to think quickly, because you think too slow in a game, you don't get a chance to show your skill. So we're going to work quickly here on the clock. So you have five minutes. Every single player must give one word. Why they think winners win. The captain then takes, reads those words out, and they take a vote on your top two. Each team gives the top two words, so we'll have ten words up here on what Dusk think, why you think winners win. Okay, you got it? Five minutes, off you go. All right, Barcelona, top two words. Listen up, don't, if your word gets taken, don't change it. Because if it's one that everybody thinks, then that's important to this group. So determination came up a lot. Attitude came up a lot, teamwork came up multiple times, persistence, desire and character. When a player 
wants to be a player, where does that thought process start? In which part of your body? Your brain. All right. You think about it and you visualize it. So players with vision on the field, players need vision off the field. Can you see where you want to be? Most players don't see the past because their head's down. Most people don't see because they're leading their life with their heads down. Instead of getting their heads up, looking around them and finding, where do I want to go? Most people don't get anywhere because they don't know where they're going. So it's really important for you to think through, who am I and where do I want to go? So that starts in your mind. In the same way on the field, doesn't matter how good your feet are, you can be technically brilliant. Unless that message goes from your brain to your feet, like a channel changer to the TV, you're not going to be switched on. So that's your attitude. When you talk about determination, that falls under what? Character. So you go from a thought, so if attitude is the way that you think, character is the way that you act. You can sit at home thinking about getting a better left foot, but unless you get that ball off the floor and start working with it, then nothing's going to change. The definition of insanity, which means to go crazy, is expecting different results from doing the same things. Most players will leave this week really motivated and inspired by each other, by the people that have come in, but how many of them are actually going to take action towards getting better? And that's where this determination and desire comes in. If you listen, the Premier League starts this weekend. Listen to the comments of the coaches in their post-match interviews on why they won. And how often the word attitude and the word character comes up. Because that's the key to reaching your potential. So if you show a positive attitude and you have the character of a champion, what will people do within your team? If you're training and you're playing with a positive attitude and a good character, then what are others in your group going to do? They're going to train the same way. So are they going to stay behind you or are they going to follow you? If somebody follows you, what are you known as? Leader. So it goes from a thought to a thing to then other people joining in. And then before long, the whole group is training with pride. The whole team is pressing when they haven't got the ball. And then that builds a momentum that then changes. The results of games don't change by themselves. They change because of one player's attitude, another player's character, and then the rest of the group follow, and then you get momentum. So you see how it follows from what you think to what you do to get others to follow you, then you get positive momentum. When Manchester City signed all of those great players, Mancini came in said, and the owners came in and said, we're going to win the Premier League. What do you think every player that signed for Man City believed? They believed that they were going to win the Premier League. The character was how were they, as individuals, going to work for each other and not just their own names towards the group goal and the sacrifices that they were going to make in the way that they play in order to achieve that goal. And it took... I bet you it took really strong leadership in the dressing room and in the boardroom to be able to achieve that potential. I bet behind the scenes there were some conflicts on the training field, there were some conflicts on the game field, there were some arguments and fights in the dressing room like there is with any interaction of great players until they get to know each other, they respect each other and they start working as a unit in one direction. But the last day of last season proved uh, you talk about persistence and you talk about desire, then 
that showed in that game, right? And we've got some clips of that on the, uh, and some photographs of that to show you later. So to me, when you're going in high school, a lot of players cringe when they hear the letters ACL because they think it's going to end their season because it's a knee injury. To me, it's the start of everybody's season is those three letters. How positive is your attitude? How strong is your character? And have you got the courage and confidence to take leadership in challenging situations? That's what develops players. The skill to win is only useful if you have the will to win. Because your feet will only do what your mind tells them to do. And I've got hundreds of players that should be in the Premier League and should be in the MLS and should be on the US national teams now because they didn't pay attention to this as much as they did their tricks and their turns, their ability, their technique and their tactics. So we're going to take one of these words that you talked about and we're going to unpack it a little bit. It's a very challenging question with a very simple answer. The reason winners win is because they want to more and for longer than the other players that are competing. When you set a goal and then you work on a plan to achieve that goal and you start to take actions and you go out with the ball and you start working with the ball on your own and you bring that technique into your training, you're the hardest working in player in training, you then bring that into the games and you've got the courage and confidence to try those things in games and then you start to get better. But for, at, the first, at the first point of disappointment, are you going to keep going or are you going to quit? Keep going, no matter what. And that's the reason winners win. Look at the fight. Who's this guy up in the top corner here? Yeah. Think his journey towards victory was an easy one? Not at all, right? Who's the guy in the middle? Yeah. Who's the team in Italy that Liverpool played in the Champions League final? AC Milan. What was the score at half time? 3 0 to Milan. What do you think Gerard did? Gerard is a what? Gerard is a leader. Gerard walked after, after Benitez finished talking, Gerard turned around to those guys and those players and said, If there's any player in this dressing room that doesn't believe that we're not only going to get a goal back, but we're going to beat these guys, then don't bother going out in the field. One of these guys can take your place because we're going to win this. That was the belief in him as a leader. And everybody followed that, and everybody knows the result from the, one of the greatest comebacks in European football. You ever watched the movie, Rudy? Quality movie about overcoming adversity and the power of somebody's positive attitude and dream and hard work towards get something. This guy was a water boy for Notre Dame and ended up playing for Notre Dame on the football. And we talked about it and there's the picture. If you look and you see the look on those players' faces, that's a look of pride. Look at the emotion on his face. Look at his neck. That's passion right there. That's passion personified. The first thing you need to do, in my opinion, to be winners is to connect with your passion. Find what your passion is and connect to it. If soccer is your passion, then you've got a chance of reaching your potential. If it isn't, you don't have as much chance of reaching your potential. If there's something else that you love more than football, do it. If football is what you love and soccer is what you love, then you're in the right place. You're in the right place in this camp and you're in the right place in this club. Because I know Gustavo is passionate about this game. I know Paul Jeffries. There's no one works harder for inner city kids in this country than Paul Jeffries. And I know where his desire and his motivation is. It's changing those kids' lives in those programs. And that's one of the reasons I've come up here today, is I believe in the people that are running this program. So you're in a great place and never take that for granted. Because sometimes you don't realize how good something is until you're without it. And you're just on this journey having fun. But what you've got here at dusk is special. The height of your achievements 
will be in direct correlation with the depth of your desire. Simply put, those that want it most will get it most. Those with the deepest desire will reach the heights of achievement. Talk about the power of desire. Who are those two guys up there? The Wright brothers. Imagine the day that those two guys sat there, stood there and said, see that bird in the sky? We're going to invent a machine that flies like that bird. Their friends wanted to commit them for mental testing because they thought they were crazy. Do you think they thought they were crazy? No. Do you think the first time they flew that plane, it, it flew perfectly? No. See, the first time that you work on a tactical phase of play, it's going to work. I think the first time you do a trick, it's going to work every time. No. But did they stop? Never. Until they got where they wanted to. They followed their passion. Same guy saying, we're going to land on that moon. All right. Anything is possible in life with the power of desire. Of desire. So have the confidence and courage to dream big dreams and pursue them. Because they're the players that you read about. They're the people that you read about. So where does it come from? It comes from inside, which is your enjoyment, from motivation from others. could come from tragic circumstances. My own desire comes from my father. Died when he was 55. And one of the last things he said to me is, chase what you love. Keep on doing what you love. And I love doing this, and that's why I'm still doing it when I've got offers to earn a lot more money doing other things. But I believe in what we're doing here is going to develop more players. And not only develop players, it's going to develop people. And we're going to grow this game together. It could come from competitive situations. How many of you have ever played in a game when some other player has said something to you that's wound you up? Yeah. Did it motivate you negatively or positively? Positively, right? So it can be a positive motivation from someone that you're competing against. Internally, where's the most powerful motivation from external or internal? What do you think? Put your hands up if you think the most powerful motivation comes from external. Put your hands up if you think the most powerful motivation comes from internal. Good. It comes from your heart, it comes from your mind, it comes from your stomach. It's that fire inside your belly that just won't go out. No matter how many people try and dash it with throwing water on it, your parents say, oh, set realistic goals. Your teacher says, you're not smart enough. Your ODP coach says, no, you're not good enough. But whose opinion is the most important opinion in your life? Yours. What you believe in and what you're passionate about. Because if you're truly passionate about it, then you've got desire. So how do you develop desire? You develop desire by finding a purpose. So your purpose could be your goal to be a player. Have belief and inspiration. Take responsibility. Have a commitment and have persistence. Those five points is what you need to be a star player. I'll send this to you so you'll, you'll see it. So first of all, find a purpose. It could be a purpose of being national champion. It could be like Danny Mwanga and the club that I work with, the Philadelphia Union. His dream in college was to be in the draft. And there he is achieving his dream. And look at the look of admiration from those fans behind him. You've got to imagine yourself there. Everything in life happens twice. First of all, you visualize it, then you actualize it. If you can see it, and you're willing to make the sacrifices to get it, then you, you can have it. But you need to map out a journey of what it will take and identify your steps to success. If this is a ladder, imagine if that's a 20-foot ladder and you put your, first, your left foot here and tried to put your right foot there, what would happen? You'd fall down. Same now if you think, you know, next, next month I'm going to make my debut in the Premier League. It's, in, it's a vision, but it's not a realistic goal because it's not in the correct time frame. You've got a whole journey of hard work and steps to success ahead of you, whether it's making ODP, whether it's making the US under-14s, whether it's making college, 
whether it's making an MLS team, you've got steps to success and work in between those steps to reach it. You've got to identify those steps to success, which we'll be talking about later on. Anybody know who this guy is? The guy is called Roger Bannister. He was the first person in history to break the four minute what? Four minute mile. For a hundred years of people running, nobody had ever broken that four minute mile. Do you think when he was training, he thought he was not gonna do it? No. What do you think happened after Roger Bannister broke that four minute mile? Many others broke it because what Roger Bannister did is he, he broke the belief barriers. So then other people thought it was now humanly possible to do it. And six people within the next couple of years broke the four, four minute mile just because they believed in themselves. So before we get into the interactive, it's important to understand that your desire, what you talked about is exactly right. Your desire is your starting point for any success. So find what drives you and what you really want and chase it. Two players that I worked with when they were your age, one's called Stephen King. Every time after practice in the Medford Strikers, whenever it got dark, I'd look around, I'd be packing my gear away and he'd be, Kingy would be under the floodlight that was the security light on the school. So like on this building, the security lights, he's knocking the ball up against the wall at the end of practice. He didn't want to leave. Every time I called his house, I asked him, where, Doug, where, where's Stephen? He's outside in the back garden, I'll just go and get him. Every day he was working on his touch. Not the most technically gifted player, but he was the only player from that team that made the MLS. Why? Because he was willing to take responsibility for his own development. Anybody know who this guy is? Freddie. As a national scout, I seen this little fella in Gaithersburg, Maryland, juggling the ball on the side while his little brother was playing for Potomac. And I pulled him to one side and the guy, Arnold Tarzi, who was the director of coaching at the time, he said, Tony, I believe you're doing the national scouting now, looking for the top players ready to bring into the youth national teams. I said, yeah, that's right. He said, you want to see this kid that's just come over from Ghana? Trust me, this kid's a player. And I said, okay, brought the player over, shook his hand. I said, I heard you're a good player. He said, yeah, I love it. I said, well, on Sunday in Arlington, Virginia, we're going to do a, a tryout for the national under 14 pool. And the under 14 chief scout, Juan Carlos Machia, is going to be there. Would you like to come? He said, yeah. I said, can you get there? He said, yeah. Bearing in mind, he was 10 years old. He was living in a different state and his mum didn't have a car. But that wasn't gonna be an obstacle to him. He went around his neighborhood. He found out somebody that could give him a ride. He got an uncle to give him a ride. Five minutes into the tryout, he wasn't there. Next minute, he walks in within 10 minutes it was evident to see that this kid was going to be a player. So his mum didn't make that decision for him. His coach didn't make that decision for him. He figured it out himself. At the highest level of this game is mental. One of the best parts about football and soccer is that you need to make the decisions and take the responsibility to figure out how to beat your opponent as an individual and as a group, you guys have to figure out how you're gonna beat Queen's Park Rangers in the last game of the season to become Premier League champions. How are you gonna figure it out? Because once training's finished, you can't even hear us on the sideline at a Premier League game. You can't hear us at a Division I college game in the ACC. You can't hear us. And even if you can hear your coach, you haven't got the time to process it and look over before the opposition has taken the ball off you. You guys have got to figure it out. And that's what he did. He wanted it that badly that he figured out a way to get it done. So don't make excuses and don't rely on other people for your development. If you want to reach that magical word, 
called excellence, then you need to commit yourself to it. There's no shortcuts to success. You can't buy a professional contract at 7-Eleven. You can't buy a college degree at Walmart. You've got to work for it. You've got to commit to it. Every single day, you've got to go out there and you've got to shoot for your goals. This is a guy called Matthew Etherington who was at my club, Peterborough United, as a 14-year-old. He lived eight hours away from Peterborough. And he turned around to his parents and said, I'm never going to make it if I just come to this club in the school holidays. I want to go and live with Tony and I want to play in the Premier League. So he left. He left home. His parents got jobs in Peterborough. He trained with us every day. And after school, he would come to the stadium to my office for extra training. Not because I asked him to, because he wanted to. One day, he walked into my office, and we called him Mushy at the time, because he had a big haircut that looked like a mushroom. I said, okay, what do you want to work on, Mushy? And I thought he was going to say shooting. What do you think he said to me? You read it. You read it, good. He said endurance. So if those of you that read the booklet know the story that he ran and ran and ran and then at the end of the session he asked if it was okay if I ran home. So I called his parents to make sure and they said yeah. He's already mapped out his route of how he's going to get there and he's going to call me and when he gets home we're going to put the watch on. And every time he did it he beat his score. Within a very short space of time because of that desire and because of that responsibility and because of that commitment Premier League scouts were in our director's box watching him and him and Simon Davis, who now plays for Fulham, got transferred to Tottenham Hotspur. So that's the commitment to excellence. Decide what you want, commit to it, be strong enough to resist the peer pressure of all his friends who thought he was crazy leaving home, get focused on what's important now. He understood that he, playing out of his age, he needed to get stronger for longer and the endurance. And you watch him going down that wing now for 90 minutes on the verge of the England team. This guy is called Andy Marshall. A lot of people will have a positive attitude, they'll have a strong character, they'll persist, they'll become leaders. But when challenging situations arrive, that's when your character and your desire is challenged and you really find out in yourself whether you really want to be a player. When Andy was 13 years of age, we were on tour in Denmark, a place called Norhalna, and we just finished a training session, and everybody's walking off the field after the cool down, and I see Marshy sitting on the fence. And I walked over, and he had his head in his hands. I could tell by the body language something was going on. I said, you all right, mate? What's the matter? He said, Tom, it's no use. I I'm never going to make it. Look at Scott. Scott was our other goalkeeper in his team. And he was the England under 14 goalkeeper. He said, look at him, he's six foot tall. He's much bigger than me, he's much stronger than me. I'm never going to, I'm not even getting any playing time in a club team. How am I going to let alone make a professional if I'm not playing? I said to him, what are you good at, Andy? He said, training. I said, what are you positive at? He said, my attitude. My attitude towards training is positive. I said, that's right, you're one of the hardest trainers I've ever met. So what do you think is going to happen in time to your body? He said, I don't, I don't know. I said, well, I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're going to grow. Look at the size of your parents. You're going to grow. And when you get that physical growth spurt, you're going to get a mental growth spurt. And those crosses that you're just missing, you're going to get. Those shots that you're tipping in because you're not strong enough, you're going to push around the post. Those centre forwards that are knocking you off the ball, you're going to knock them off the ball. So we made a, an agreement that day that I would travel from Norwich to Peterborough and train in, in a place like this, in a little gymnasium. And we got the wrestling mats out. And every week he worked harder than he did the week before. 
Andy Marshall was just over here in Philadelphia as the backup goalkeeper for Aston Villa. There he is, playing in the FA Cup final, which is the English Super Bowl for football against Ryan Giggs, making a save. Why? Because he persisted. Yes, it took some external inspiration to get him to believe in himself, but he never stopped working hard. And when his growth spurt came, so did his confidence spurt. So if you're a small player, if you're a small player sitting in this room now, it's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. What, you, what height do you think Messi was, or Maradona was, or David Silva was, or Aguero was? Do you think they were big monsters when they were your age? No, they were the slightest, smallest kids with this build or that build. But they had the attitude, they had the character, they had the deep, deepest desire, and that's why they're wearing those shirts for real. Every single one of you has a star inside. How bright and how high your star shines is in direct correlation with how positive your attitude is and how strong your character is. So you don't have to be Wayne Rooney, you don't have to be Barack Obama to be a leader. What you need to be a leader in dusk is to demonstrate positive behaviors in training, positive behaviors in school, and conduct yourself with professionalism around dusk. And then what are the younger players going to do to you? They're going to respect you and they're going to follow your lead. So this is a responsibility not only to develop you, but for the players that are coming under in the academy that you're a leader to, are going to watch the way, listen to the way you talk about other people. They're going to watch the way you train. They're going to listen to your, the way that you handle referees' calls. They're going to listen to the, the way you respond to being benched. And they're going to follow that lead. So that's the responsibility we have for those that are coming after us. Because the best way for you to learn, boys, is to teach. So every opportunity you get to work with younger players, work with them. What's the one thing that you remember from any of those slides? Building a positive attitude and character. The thing about the firing. Keep believing and don't let anyone tell you that you can't achieve something that's your deepest desire. You have to work as hard as you can to be the best you can be. And that's a great segue into what we're going to train on next. So on your chair, on your chair is a worksheet. I sent you a chapter of a book that we're writing now called Character of Champions, based on what we've learned from 25 years of working with players who made it and didn't make it, and what they're telling us now that mattered. And if they could change something, what would they change? One of the things players would change is their pride in their performance. So in your teams, I want you to spend five minutes as an individual and get your thoughts on what you think. You've got five minutes to do both sides of this paper. And then for 10 minutes after that, you're going to share your ideas and your talent with your other teammates just like you would on the training field. So we're training to get better at pride. So this afternoon, we can go on that field and we'll take this and put it into action on the field in Randall's Island. Key word there was achieve. Next one was steps. Steps to achieve it. So know what you want to achieve. Steps to sit to achieve it. Why? An open question to any team. So if that's the definition of pride, if it's that feeling inside that you know that you've worked hard to accomplish or achieve something, then why is that so important for you to develop to your potential? I know you want to receive the ball side on there, mate. But good. What's your name? Dev? 
All right, what's the answer, mate? All right, you were listening. All right, thank you. All right, so pride, personal responsibility in developing excellence. Doesn't matter how much, doesn't matter how much your coaches are quality, and they are. Doesn't matter how good your club is, and it is. Doesn't matter how much your parents love you, and they do. Doesn't matter how good your teachers want you to get straight A's, and they do. In the equation of player development, what's the critical success factor? You. Nothing works unless you do. Nothing works unless you do. Real Madrid, you're going to take P. Man United, you're going to take R. Man City, you're going to take D. Bayern Munich, you're going to take E. One person from each team is going to get up and explain to us what does it mean why is it important and how most important how can you show it in training and games All right so what what did the p stand for okay it said pride is about being persistent showing determination despite the obstacles and give a hundred percent in every training session train as if you hope to play Last year I did some work with a club called Penn Fusion, which is an academy club that plays against Dusk in the EDP. And I, I came back from FIFA and we worked with this one team, the 93s, the under-17s. And they said, Tom, we want you to come in and do some workshops with these guys, do some sessions to prepare them for their run towards states. So we did these workshops on team building, on their individual progress, um, commitment to the team, what it was going to take to reach their potential. And in one of the workshops, we talked about pride. And I asked a boy called Melvin, who was in the Philadelphia under-16s at the time. He was on a full scholarship at a local um, school. One of the better players in the group, and I asked everybody, I want you to give me an honest answer after training to this number. And the question was that, out of 90, so the session lasts 90 minutes, out of 90 minutes, how many minutes can you honestly swear on your family's life that they were the most committed, focused minutes that you could give? And I, I went known them for a few weeks, so we got a good relationship going. And they were honest. They, weren't gonna, they were clever. They could just give me the answer I wanted to hear. But I said, be honest. So I asked, it, I asked him, and the average was about 70. Melvin said, what number do you think he said? 40. He said 40, 90, somewhere in between, 60. He said 60 out of 90, Tom. He said, I'm going to be honest. He said... Nothing to do with the session, because I said to him, was it the session that was put on? Was it not inspiring? No, it was a great session. So what's got, he said, I don't know. He said, I just lose me focus, I lose me concentration. Some things I'm not into, and then other things, something clicks and I'm away. So I said, Mel, let's think about this. He said, you're now in your under 18 year, you've been here since you were under nine, so let's make the math easy. Let's say you've been here 10 years. Right. What he was effectively telling me is he'd wasted a third of his training. So he'd been here 10, I crossed it off and said 9. So out of 9 years, you've effectively trained for two thirds of them, which is how many? 6. So what he'd effectively said is he'd wasted three years of training. So even though he was a quality player, because he had, he had great ability, his pride in his performance in training, by his own admission, was two-thirds to his potential. 
And I've got players now that should be in the Premier League that would have had that number. And if that number would have been higher, they would be not watching the Premier League from a bar in their local town now. They'd be on the field. And trust me, it's a bitter pill to swallow when you have to look at somebody playing in a position or in a job that you know at a time that that should have been you. And that could have been you. You had the ability, but you didn't take the opportunity or you didn't show the aptitude and the attitude to get there. So my question to you this afternoon, for this afternoon, is what will your number be this afternoon? Out of, out of whatever that training session is, ask yourself after every training session, what's my number? Don't worry about where your number is because you've got an opportunity to improve it. In the same way, you've got an opportunity to become a better player and a better student and a better person. What you need to do is you need to, on that training session today, give everything you've got and then after that training session, ask yourself, what's my number? And what you've put into training is what you can withdraw in games. So imagine it like a training bank account. You can't withdraw money that you don't have in your account. If you've put the training minutes into the bank, you can withdraw them in games. Those players that don't put the effort in, in training or the pride, they go overdrawn in games. They're the ones that make the mistake or aren't the, don't have the endurance or can't figure it out when it gets tough. The ones that have put the training minutes in are the ones that have got them left at the end of the game. You can't metamorphosize. Admittedly, we understand some players aren't training players, some players are just big game players. But even that big game player, imagine if they would put more effort into training, the level that they could have achieved. All right. Today, watch your number. Train as if you dream to play. Man United, you've got responsibility. Well done. Responsibility. Shown respect, shown commitment, shown leadership. Examples of it, working hard, picking up others. The game demands the player responds. So the game presents a situation, the player responds. They've got a choice. They either step up or step back. They either let things happen or they make things happen. Which type of player are you? Do you have the confidence and courage to step up and take someone on 1v1? You, you clear through on goal, you can either shoot or pass. Have you got the courage to shoot or would you rather pass on responsibility? Are you going to pass on responsibility or are you going to take it? What's the worst thing that could happen in that situation in front of goal? You miss, right? Well, the, yeah, it's a good answer. The, the worst thing he said is you don't take the shot. Let's say you take the shot and you miss. What's, what's it called, beginning with them? A mistake. So that's the worst thing that can happen. You've learned how not to shoot. The next time, you try something differently. And you keep on trying different things until you get the right result. So mistakes are opportunities to begin again more intelligently. Who's the best player in the world? Messi. Who's the best player in the world? Messi. Who's the best player in the world? Messi. All right, let's take Xavi. Let's take Neymar. And let's take Messi. First of all, were any of them giants when they were 12 or 13? No. Next of all, what do, all, what do two of those players, Neymar and Messi, have a great technical quality and ability to do? Pass, dribble or shoot? What would you say to that? that the unique differentiator. What differentiates them from the most of the players? Their style of play, because they can what? Everybody can pass, right? A shot is just a pass into the goal. What differentiates them is the dribbling. Dribbling takes courage, right? Do you think when they were your age and they dribbled that they got every move right? No. What do you think they did the next time? Just got up again. Just got up and kept going and kept going. All the things that we talked about today, pride, persistence, positive attitude. 
They take responsibility and make things happen. Let's look at your life. Let's look at 24 hours in your life. And let's break it down into thirds. For a third of the 24 hours that you're on the earth, how many are you in bed for? Don't say 15. No. No. Let's say 8, right? So we're in bed for 8. Where else are you during the school year for most, for another? You're in school for another third. For eight. So let's say a third, let's say a third. So now you've got a third left, right? And this is where your choices come in. Because you need the rest, you must go to school. So you've got a third that's your choice. How you spend that time will determine how high you reach in soccer and towards your goals. The responsibility that you take there. If you're a person that goes home and has to be told to do the homework, if you're a person that has to be told to put your plate in the dishwasher, if you're a person every single night that has to be reminded to get the towel off the floor and put it on the door, then how can you be a player that comes to training and games and achieves your potential responsibility? The answer is you can't. And this isn't about psychology, this is about developing winning habits. If you can think, and you can look around yourself off the field and say what needs to happen, you can bring that habit onto the field and you can be shabby, looking around your head on a swivel, looking, okay, what can I do now? Ask yourself all the time, what, what am I going to do next? If the ball comes to me, where am I going? He knows every time. If you're a person off the field that goes home and says, okay, What's the best thing that I can do now to become a better player? What's the best thing that I can do to use my time? Keep asking those challenging questions to yourself and make the positive choices. Because if you can take responsibility and think for yourself and do positive things off the field, then guess what you're going to bring to the field? You're going to bring winning habits. And winning habits develop winning players. Winning players together form winning teams. So the answer to what does it take to develop a player to their potential is developing a person to their potential. How positive is your attitude, how strong is your character. Doesn't matter what ability you've got, my argument is that nobody will ever reach their potential until they strive to meet those attitude, character and leadership traits alongside their technical, tactical and physical qualities. If you've got both, you've got a fighting chance of reaching your potential. And no matter how high the soccer ladder you climb, you'll be a winner in life. Because the things that you're learning through dusk, after you stop finishing, will be the same qualities that colleges want, the same qualities wives want, and the same qualities employers want. Thanks for your attention, boys. You've been a cracking group. We're about two-thirds of the way through. You've really participated well, but as in a training session, you need a break. You need a mental break here, and we'll come back, and we're going to nail the last part, which is to take everything you've told us and put it into an action plan. So what do you visualize for yourself? What are you prepared to do, and what's your first step? So it's going to be a goal-setting workshop next. I know you touched on that on Monday, but you're in a difficult environment with those fans in that gym. So hopefully today, we don't have to spend a lot of time discussing what is goal setting. We'll get right into playing. All right? Look at, the, look at the body language of his arms and look at where he's looking. Look at these executives that have worked so hard to put this team on the field. Look at Mancini, absolutely physically and mentally exhausted. You listen to his interviews after. He couldn't put one word in front of the other because he put everything emotionally into that victory. Look at this guy, I don't know who he is, a physio, a kit man, but look how much it means to him. You tell the body language of people. You can tell who are going to be the players when they come to the session by their body language. When you're talking to them, are their eyes, is there any life in their eyes? 
If there's no life in their eyes, unlikely there'll be life in their feet. But look how much that means to them. And where do you think that trophy started? That outcome goal of winning the Premier League for the first time in decades, where do you think that started? Started in a thought, right? And then thoughts become, yeah, thoughts become things. You become what you think about for most of the time. So if you focus on getting honours, then as long as you're willing to put in the work, you're going to get closer to honours. If you think about getting a left foot, but don't pick up the ball, it's like imagining that your handwriting's going to get any better without picking up the pen. It's not going to happen, no matter how positive your attitude is. If you don't follow that with character and an action, then it's not going to lead to improvement. One of the things that takes a person from a positive attitude to a strong character leadership is the power of goal setting. Hands up if you've been in a tournament before. All right, when's your next one? Your next tournament is the EDP kickoff. I'll be there as well. So hopefully I'll get a chance to see you guys on the field. Imagine that our two teams, our Penn Fusion team and your Dusk, we were going to play the game, right? And we'd warmed up, we'd shot at the goal, we'd done our little shooting drills, and then we'd gone off the field to get our game jerseys on, we'd walk back on the kickoff, and then some guys from the tournament had just come on their tractor and just taken the goals away. Both goals had just taken them off the field. And the referee's like, come on, let's play. What would, you, what would be your reaction? You're confused, right? Would that game be as much fun? No. Would that game be more difficult or easier? Wouldn't it be a different game? Be more difficult because you've got nothing to, you've got nothing to aim for. You've got nothing to, sh to shoot at. All right? The games and training are a lot more fun when you've got direction, you've got competition, you've got goals to shoot at, which give you direction. No different in life. Imagine going through life if you had nothing to aim for, if you had nothing to shoot for. Worse still, imagine if you knew what you wanted and you just sat in front of Facebook and did nothing about it. That's the power of goal setting, is players with limited ability but tremendous attitudes will become overachievers. Who knows who Jamie Carragher is? Jamie Carragher, a decade in the Premier League. Any more technically gifted than any of you? No. But how deep is his desire? That passion is coming out of his pores. He absolutely loves this game. He's, with limited technical ability, he's carved out a tremendous career because of the power of a positive attitude, the strength of his character, and the depth of his desire. But do you think he just woke up one day, and, oh my God, look at me, I'm a Premier League player. No, what do you think he, when he was a kid? He saw it. It was a what? It was a vision? Yeah, it was a dream? So what's the difference between when you sleep at night and you think about nice things? It's a dream. But what, what changes a dream into a goal? Hard work and time. Your goals are your dreams with a deadline. Your goals are your dreams with a deadline. If you say, I am going to get 100 juggles, but you don't put a deadline on it, then you don't give yourself any sense of urgency. But if you say, I'm going to get 100 juggles in 10 weeks, then you've, it's clear. You've got 10 weeks to get it done. So in, within 10 weeks, we've got to improve by 10 a week. Five times a week we're going to train. So how many juggles a day do we have to improve by? Two. So as long as we go out five times a week and improve by two juggles a day, you're going to achieve that goal. So see how big lofty goals that people think you can't achieve can be broken down into digestible bite-sized chunks and taken one day at a time. But the most important step on that journey is the first one. And that's what you're doing now is committing, you're already in the two top percent of players. The 98% of players have not got their goals down on a piece of paper. They haven't written down where they want to go and who they want to be. So that's the opportunity that we've got now. Let's share your learnings and your understanding with your teammates.
to, to help them become better. At that tournament, the next tournament that you play, your coach is going to train you to prepare you for that game. You're going to take pride in your training. You're going to warm up and then just before the game or the training session before the game, the coach is going to give you a game what beginning with P? A game plan. Right? What this is, is this is taking your dreams, putting a deadline on them and filling in the steps to success that we talked about on that ladder. So it's creating milestones on a journey towards where you want to get. We may never get to some of the goals, but we've got a plan to achieve them. Because there's two types of goals. The one with the trophy is an outcome goal. The ones that you're writing now, your journey towards that outcomes are, what's another word for that journey beginning with P? A process. Process. So they're process goals. So process goals are your steps towards the outcome goal. Which one of those two types of goal do you have the most control over? The process, the journey. How positive is my attitude? How strong is my commitment? How persistent am I? How much pride am I? So we talked today about the importance of having a positive attitude, connecting with your passion, and having a deep desire towards wanting something, then taking pride in your performance, being persistent in our approach, and now starting to think about putting a plan towards achieving those desires and making them into goals. So the process ones are the one you've got more control over. The result of a game, is that a process or an outcome goal? So why would, what would make it an outcome goal? Why, who's, somebody else is in, somebody else can what? Someone else can have control over the result of that game. It could be, who could it be? Could be your teammate making a mistake. Could be the referee making a bad call. Anyone ever been in the game when a referee's made a bad call? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about on the other side of the, the, the halfway line? <laughs> yeah, your parents. <laughs> on the field. The opposition. You can have a bit of, you could, you could show tremendous pride. The, your number may be 90. Nobody have made a mistake in the game. But there may be somebody, a Neymar, a Messi on the other team that's just done something unbelievable that's beaten you. And then you never lose, you only learn. And that's why it's better for you to play against teams that are stronger because you get something out of the game rather than tanking teams 8 0 and they learn from your qualities. So you understand what an outcome goal is. So making ODP could be an outcome goal. Making the next level of dusk could be an, an outcome goal. Getting into college could be an outcome goal. Let's talk about some process goals. Okay. Who has a process goal that they would like to share or is willing to share? Okay, a goal, okay. So one goal is run under six minute mile. Somebody else? So those four goals, are they well set goals? Are they a good game plan? The coach that gives you a game plan, is that smart or is that dumb? It's smart, right? Dumb to go out in a game without a plan. So how can we help you Create smart goals. What's the opposite of vague? Beginning with S and ending in C. Spur specific. If you've got a tape at home, what's its job to do? If you've got to measure, right?
if I said to you, look, I'm really impressed with you boys, I think uh, a goal that you should set is to make your debut for Manchester City next Saturday in the Premier League, what would, what would describe that goal? A word that's vague or is it un, unachievable? Unachievable. So the opposite of unachievable is achievable. So you've got to set achievable things. That goal is unrealistic. So you need to set realistic goals. And then what does this measure? Time. time. You've got to have a time frame. So let's measure these four goals against that principle. In soccer, you have principles of play. You can measure your teams and your players' performance through the principles of play. You can measure your goals by the smart principle of goal setting. So it's smart if it's specific, if it's measurable, if it's achievable, if it's realistic, and if it's time frame. Put your hand up if you can tell us which of those goals are measurable. How many of those goals are measurable? Or which ones? What, what do you think? Yeah, so go to every practice, which means... A, so what would be the measurement of that? If you say every, what does that mean in percentage times? 100%. So 100% is a measurement. Number one, is it measurable? Yes. Number two, is it measurable? Stop almost every shot. Is it specific? It's vague, isn't it? So, in the same way, it's an honourable goal, but in the same way as he said, I'm going to go to every practice, but as soon as he put a measurement on it, he's committed and he's clear. So, take almost and give, you, give a percentage. Realistic. 85? Okay. So now, that's a much better goal. Let's take that goal. Has it got a time frame on it? No. So what would, you said that without moving your lips. Well done. You should be a ventriloquist. Perfect. One year. Now, let's look at that goal. Is it specific now? Is it measurable now? Is it achievable? Is it realistic? Is it time frame? What's the time frame on it? A year. All right, good. So now it gets five stars, right? So it's a well set goal. Now you need a plan. If you were to say, take your sheet of paper and you've got steps to success on it, what's a way that you could take that piece of paper and monitor and track your progress? We all, spot, we all support a Premier League team, right? Put your hands up if you've got a Premier League team that you're going to follow. All right? How are you going to follow that team? You're going to watch them on TV? You're going to, how will you know where they are in the league? You check the standings. Where will you check the standings? You'll go online and you'll look at the league table, right? And you can look at their fixtures, you can look at their performance, you can look at their results. You'll know how they are in relation to their goal. How will you know that you, you are on track to be in the Champions League or relegation? How will you know you're on track for your goals? So in math, what would that be called beginning with G? A what? A graph. If you draw a line from there to there, that is his track towards his goal. If you divide this into months, you, by months, he needs to be on 659, 759, 859, 959, 1000. So you will know by what you've just told me if you're on track or not. If you're on track, what do you keep on doing? The same things that you're doing. If you're off track, what do you need to do? Change. So maybe instead of going three times a week, he has to go five times a week. Instead of going for 10 minutes, he goes for 20 minutes. Instead of trying to do everything himself, he gets a jug somebody that, that has reached a thousand juggles, brings them in, 
and said, how did you do it? Maybe you get some help from others. You get the idea? So where could you put these goal setting sheets? In your drawer? Oh, on a door, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, on a door. Why? That's a great answer. Why is it such a great answer? Because you can see it. Where else do you see every morning when you wake up? You go into the... You go into the bathroom. Oh, you go to the fridge, yeah. So great. So there's three places. On your bedroom wall, on the fridge, or on the bathroom. So if you made three copies of your goal, and you wrote it down and put it on a piece of paper, either on your mirror, on your fridge, on your bedroom wall, on your, you framed it on your bedside cabinet, you put it in the inside of your homework diary. During your day, you're going to be constantly reminded of what your goal is. If you go to the tournament next weekend, do you think your team will get a shot on goal? Yeah. You'd be pretty disappointed if they didn't, right? So imagine if you took this piece of paper and you kept looking at it, but you didn't take a shot at your goal. Are you going to win? No. Do you have the ability to win? Yeah. So what, what takes you from ability to reaching your goal? Hard work. In two words, one beginning with A. Positive attitude. Next one. Strong character, which becomes a leader. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, boys. Players, no matter how much ability they've got, will only reach their potential on the field if they have a positive attitude, a strong character, the courage and confidence to be leaders. The best way for you to learn to be a player is to find somebody else who needs help and teach them how to be a player. If you want to learn about persistence, attitude and character, teach it to those less fortunate than yourself. Connect with your passion, follow your passion, and then try and find a way to use your passion to help other people. At dusk, you've got a tremendous opportunity to do that. In 2010, I met a guy called Max Watson from Dusk, who was a B-team player at under 10, became an A-team player, went on and became captain. I was running a program at the time with Paul called the Urban Soccer Collaborative. We raised some money to be able to take a group of young leaders to South Africa to the World Cup. And we asked all our programs around the country to nominate a young leader within their club that was warrants this place. Max Watson came to the World Cup and was amongst young leaders from all over the world. And what that did for him is it gave him an appetite for learning, so he came back more hungry, but it also humbled him. Because what he realized is that his challenges or his problems were other people's dreams. Because we were amongst kids. We were, we were oh no, look, I've got brown on my cleats, so I'm going to have to get a new pair. Or I haven't got the latest, latest T90, so these aren't any good. We were in villages where kids didn't even have shoes. We were in villages where babies were getting eaten by rats. That was their challenges and their problems. So our problems are other people's dreams. So during this journey, from where you are now to where you want to go, you're going to have disappointments and you're going to have frustrations. Your journey to become a good player is going to be an emotional roller coaster. But the best thing about a low is you know a high is coming next. And when you're in those low moments, that's when you've got to stay strong, struggle through, show pride in your performance, show persistence, and keep going. Because on the other side of struggle is strength. So never, ever give up on what you set as your goals. Show pride and persistence and keep moving towards it. But most of all, look within Downtown United's program and get in city in the community. Tremendous program that you can take what your passion is, which is football, and teach other people less fortunate than ourselves. So congratulations on your performance. I'm really impressed today. But my challenge to each and every one of you is to contact Paul Jeffries and find a way that you can take your ability and your intelligence 
whether it's being able to read to a kid, whether it's to teach a trick to a kid, whether it's to give a coat in the winter to a kid, but take what you love and use it to help kids in this city and this program that are less fortunate than you. All right? Wish you the best of luck, boys. Thanks for your attention.